Juba Mermagas, the 27th of May 1948, the 10th of November 1986, was a Yugoslav amateur boxer, street fighter and gangster. He was commonly known by his nickname Ljuba Zemunak, Ljuba from Zemun. A three-time convicted rapist in Yugoslavia, Magas rose to become a Yugoslav Mafia crime boss and one of the most influential figures in the Frankfurt underworld during the 1970s and 1980s. In 1986 he was murdered by rival gangster Goran Vukovic. Early life born to a Croatian father, Sai Magas, from then and a Serbian mother, Rosa Kursik, Ljubomir spent his early youth in the Belgrade neighborhood of Zemin. When the youngster was six, his father abandoned the family. Young Ljubomir stayed out of trouble for the most part while living in Zemin. When he was eight, his mother moved the family across town to the Zvezdara neighborhood where he attended Cirilo I Metada Primary School. During his early teens, Magas took up boxing at Radniki Boxing Club and became involved in street fighting. His nickname, Ljuba Zemunak, Ljuba from Zemun, came from his original neighborhood. After finishing primary school, he enrolled in a trade school for auto repair, but never finished it. For a short time he worked at the IMT tractor factory in Dolbanovci. In addition to street fights, he started making threats and vandalism. The police become aware of him for the first time in 1964 due to a purse snatching incident. Criminal Career 1960s Early days in Belgrade for a 1965 robbery, 17-year-old Magas was sentenced by the Belgrade District Court and referred to an institution for juvenile offenders. A year later he repeated the offense and got sentenced again, this time by the District Court in the Serbian city of Nis. Violent by nature, Magas continued brawling in public. One such fight broke out in 1967 at University of Belgrade's Faculty of Technology when Magas beat up Vladimir Vukovic, a student at the faculty. Afraid of yet another arrest and sentencing, Magas escaped abroad for the first time, briefly crossing into Austria. He developed and fostered a reputation as a physically tough, vicious, aggressive, controlling, and vindictive criminal. Many other criminals feared him and sought his company and approval, but even that was no guarantee of protection as he often turned on those close to him. In fall 1967, together with Raid Senta Koldovic and Zoran Rabija Milosovljevic, 19-year-old Magas was arrested on a rape charge. Senta and Rabija got off due to lack of evidence, while Magas was sentenced for rape to two years and eight months in Sremska Mitrovica Penitentiary. During his prison stays he established himself as a leader, regularly harassing, abusing and humiliating other inmates. One anecdote had Magas forcing his fellow inmates to chew over dry and hardened bread so that he could make chess figures out of it. In his youth, he held pro-Yugoslav political leanings. 1970s Italy and West Germany Magas resumed his criminal activity upon his release in summer 1970. In March 1971 he escaped to Italy with an associate, Danilo Dani Novakovic, in order to avoid arrest over a car theft. Magas's friend Senta soon joined him. Magas settled in Milan the gathering spot for Yugoslav fugitives at the time. His viciousness during armed robberies got him the attention of the Italian police, who exiled him to West Germany. In West Germany, Magas was not well known. However, his physical strength, bear-like appearance, psychotic energy and thuggish ways quickly distinguished him. He settled in Offenbach am Main, essentially a suburb of Frankfurt, where the Yugoslav Mafia operated out of a cafe called Zernal. They further frequented hospitality establishments in nearby Frankfurt such as Jukebox Jumbo Jet Cafe. At first, Magas worked as bouncer, however, using the alias Tomislav Spatterer, he assembled a group of criminals specializing in armed robberies and racketeering. This marked the beginning of his criminal heyday, through fear and intimidation he led a group of associates that enabled him to secure a steady income stream. He trafficked young girls from Belgrade and other parts of Serbia to Germany, 
forcing them into prostitution. In June 1974, Magas was arrested for extortion, threats, and physical assault against a man who refused to pay the racket. Around this time Magas was wanted in Yugoslavia for another rape. In September 1974 Yugoslavia sought his extradition from West Germany. German authorities refused the request in December. Yugoslavia submitted another request, while Magas was arrested in Frankfurt again in May 1975 for using falsified identification documents, robbery and driving without a license. In September 1975, his extradition to Yugoslavia was approved. Magas was sentenced to four and a half years. In fall 1978, Magas committed yet another rape and fled to Frankfurt where he lived as Giovanni Angelis. On the 27th of October 1978, Magas was suspected of taking part in the murder of Veljko Krifakapik aka Velja Kronograk. Apparently, Kronograk had a row with Santa over gambling debts, which Santa settled by killing Velja with the help of Magas and Juzef. Juza Bulic Acute. While Magas operated in Frankfurt, Santa did the same in Stuttgart. Other established Yugoslavia criminals such as Dord Bozovic aka Jiskwa, Zeljko Razidovic aka Arkin and Danilo Novikovic aka Danny kept in touch with Magas, especially when crimes were afoot. According to journalist sources, in the 1970s, Magas started working with Yugoslav State Security, UDBA. 1980s In January 1980, an international arrest warrant got issued in connection to the 1978 Bodva rape charge. Acting upon the international warrant, West German authorities arrested Magas, extraditing him to Yugoslavia on 20 February 1981. After standing trial before the Tidograd District Court, he got sentenced to five years. On appeal, the case went to the Yugoslav Supreme Court, which ordered a retrial. In October 1982 having already served 20 months, Magas was granted bail. He ended up returning to West Germany in crime. In 1983, Magas was among some 20 individuals that got arrested on extortion, blackmail and armed robbery charges, part of a sweeping action by the West German police. The police case against Magas proved weak. Instead of putting him away, it only managed to embolden rival Yugoslav gangsters within Frankfurt's underworld seeking to challenge Magas's rule over the city. One candidate was 20-something hustler and thug Goran Vukovic. He began committing crimes independently such as robbing a jewelry shop without Magas's permission. Magas found out and in January 1985 Magas and his associate Slobodan, Ken, Savik and Vlada Bakar attempted to kill Vukovic and his friend Boris Patkov. Vukovic was wounded by Savik. German police arrested Magas, but he was acquitted due to lack of evidence. Magas used his influence around Yugoslav emigre circles to obtain favorable witness testimonies and reportedly even got football coach Faryudin Huzufi to provide an alibi for his whereabouts on the night of the shooting. On the 10th of November 1986, just before 10.30 a.m., Magas, Vukovic and their respective entourages encountered one another in front of the court. Vukovic pulled out a gun and shot Magas twice in the chest. The German police arrested Vukovic. Magas succumbed to his injuries hours later. See also Christy Jengal Ubovic, mobster and godson. References